uh, there will be a meal at 12.30 and the reception will begin at 1.30. So I think that pretty much covers everything that uh, we have uh, listed for the upcoming weeks. So now let's begin our service and may you be richly blessed by it.
those worshiping at home can be found on page 882 of the Methodist Hymnal. Especially in these trying times, it's needed more than ever to affirm our belief as Christians. Please join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will Berry, Willow Henderson, Brooks Holt, and happy birthday, Brooks. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> How old are you today, buddy? Nine. 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 Man, good job. <laughs> Ingram Hudson, Jack Marsh, Daniel Mundecki, Ethan Rod, Emerson Serena. Raven 
in Shoebridge. Like I said, most of these kids were in early service. Um, just give these kids a hand. We've <laughs> been running a lot of these kids since they were little bitty, and we can't believe that they're this age either. But we're excited for you guys and what you're going to do to help lead the other kids in our children's ministries. Thank you, Cindy. Um, I think it's time for prayer. You guys are going to help us with our prayer. Um, Pastor Harvey's going to do a special prayer time. I'm just going to ask you guys to kind of turn around and kneel at the altar. And um, Y'all can kneel down. We're going to have some others join you. It's this time of year where we pray over all of our students, all of our teachers. So if you are a teacher of any kind here at our church or if you teach in our schools, Blunt County will begin this week, uh, and also Aniana. Aniana is go back on the 10th, is that right? Say that with a smile. <laughs> Blunt County is the 9th, if I got that right, there on Wednesday, I believe. But anyway, we want to invite you to come, and students, I want to ask the encounter group that have been loving Jesus all weekend, I'm going to ask you like we did before, would y'all come and bless them? Because Matthew's going to share in a minute about iron, sharp and iron. And so, you teenagers that are coming behind them, you were here just a few years ago. And so, uh, anybody wants to come, we're just going to pronounce a blessing. You know, the last few weeks we've been talking about the armor of God. I'm just going to speak these words over us. We need to be covered in God's armor. And then I'm going to pronounce a blessing that comes out of the book of Numbers. An old UNYF uh, blessing that comes out of Numbers, the sixth chapter. And I'll include that as well. So... With that, let's pray together. God, we love you. Thank you already for the way that you've moved through our service last night. The word that Tyler preached and the worship service and the youth that they will continue to encounter their God and their Father, their Savior, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we also specifically pray for these students fourth graders, and we ask blessing and grace upon them, and as we think about them and all the other students, iron sharpens iron, we ask you to bless, and thank you, God. We've got so many counselors and so many teachers here in our church that are filled with the Holy Spirit, and they love Jesus, and they want to serve God, and so we ask you to bless all the ministries of our church, and, and, and Lord, as we think about school starting, parents are concerned about their students, Things going on in the hallways and in the classrooms. And so we just we just invite you, Holy Spirit. Enter into every hallway and every every classroom. And Lord, we know because we believe in you that you have given us your spirit, but we also know that your grace and your anointing can come because of the presence of your spirit. We also, Lord, have been looking at Ephesians the sixth chapter, and I just speak these words as a covering over all of our children, all of our students, our grandchildren. As we think about the armor of God, we pray that truth will cover them. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth. When we put on the belt of truth, we put on Jesus. It binds everything together. God bless our students and our teachers with truth. Lord, we also know that we need that breastplate of righteousness. We need your righteousness. So thank you, Jesus, for clothing us with your righteousness when we receive you as our Savior. Lord, we thank you for the gospel, the truth about you, and that you are the Prince of Peace. So we pray and speak a blessing that the gospel of peace so bless all of our students, our children, our grandchildren. Faith, the shield of faith, to quench the fire and darts of the evil one. God, our faith is in you. So Jesus, when we, we put on this shield and we take it up. Our faith is in who you are. Lord, we know that we must be born again. We must be saved. So we speak salvation. Salvation that can come alone through Jesus Christ over our children, over our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. God, let your salvation reign. Thank you, God, for your word as we take up the sword of the Spirit. We've just handed out Bibles. We have literally handed out the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. God, may our 
youth and our children grow and increase and in the knowledge of the Son of God through your word. And Lord, we're praying. We're having a conversation. A conversation with our God. So prayer and this armor, we just pray for covering over all of us. We pray over all of our ministries to be covered in the armor of God. We pray over our students. We pray over our teachers at school, our school administrators, that the armor of God will be present in all the hallways in the classrooms of Aniana schools, all of Buck County. Let the armor of God cover us. Thank you, God. And now receive this blessing as we end this prayer from the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And amen. Thank y'all.
Let us pray. Almighty God, our helper, every gift comes from your hand. You understand our temptations and our weaknesses. Help us to stand resolute in our commitment to follow Christ rather than the lure of our culture. Let our congregation be a haven of those rich in good works and eager to share your message of hope. In gratitude, we dedicate our offerings through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. <laughs>
our special guest speaker uh, come speak this morning. Uh, I do want to tell you, a few weeks ago, in my office, uh, I'm assuming maybe somebody on the staff uh, could be wrong, I uh, delivered this Bible uh, to my office uh, on my desk. Uh, but I opened up and looked inside and it says, To the youth, to the youth of Lesson Memorial, uh, Methodist Church. And it has a person who, uh, who gave this, uh, donated this Bible. But it was dated January uh, 1st, 1968. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, they just, there was, and so I'm, I'll, I'll do my best to take care of it. And, uh, but I just wanted to share that because if this church has been, for many years, uh, praying for the youth and uh, you know, funding the youth and, and just everything you do for the youth, doing it for the children's ministry and for the youth and adult ministries as well. Uh, but specifically uh, the, the youth is what I want to thank you for. Uh, this weekend has been a, a full weekend, a busy weekend. Uh, the theme was encountering, so of course, you know, we're, we're focusing on encountering the Lord and, and hoping that our youth can have an encounter with the Lord this, this weekend. And so we had a few sessions we, where we covered who is Jesus, and, and another session was where were you when, when Jesus met you for that first time? You know, were you hiding from him? Were you arguing with him? And looking at different people in the Bible, which one of these people maybe most represents you or can you relate to? And then last night we, we talked about uh, what does it mean and what does it look like to be made alive in Christ? And then this morning we're going to talk about what does our life look like after the encounter. Uh, also this weekend we helped uh, Miss Celia with Feed My Sheep. We uh, did all the youth brought some, uh, some donations of peanut butter and jelly and then spent the, some, some of the time yesterday packing some bags. And, uh, it was a great experience for the youth and we had several pool parties. We had a shrimp boil out at the lake yesterday. And, and uh, I want to say thank you to a, to a few people. We had uh, it's Karen Cook and Don Wilson in the kitchen. Thank you for uh, your effortless hours of planning. Uh, they're still doing that now. We're at, the youth are having lunch uh, after this. So uh, fellowship also. They're prepping that now. Uh, David Wilson and Tony Dennison, thank you for uh, driving the bus and uh, the van uh, all weekend back and forth to multiple places. Our chaperones, thank you. Uh, also, um, the Buckners and the Smiths were opening the homes for, uh, for the pool parties. And then with that said, uh, I, I'll call, I know he's sitting at the back because he likes to make a good interview. Everybody turn around. Look, here he comes. Give him a, give him a hand. That's good. Every night we're blessed. We're blessed this morning to hear from uh, Reverend Dr. Bishop Matt Cornelius. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. <laughs> Whew, what a weekend. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Matthew Cornelius, I'm Brooke's husband, and of course he's in his bag. Before I get started, I'm going to tell you about a little encounter that, that happened this weekend. Okay, folks, found a, I think it's a, I think it's a hobo asleep in our sanctuary about 2.30 uh, Saturday morning. Now, I can tell you that that hobo was at, as scared to see him as he was to see the hobo. The reason being, see, I was the hobo. <laughs> I had decided I needed to get about 30, 45 minutes sleep and fell asleep right over here. <laughs> so, there was some encounter. Before I get started, I want to I want to pray to you. Dear Heavenly Father, come fill this place. God, my word, let us speak. Let me know when to move on. And let me pray to you. I pray for our children, our youth, our church to bind together as we walk in the path of God. I pray for the teachers and the students they start back to school this week. I pray for the leadership of this church, the leadership of our country, for you to come fill their hearts. The needs of every person in this room, as you know our struggle, please be with us as we let our light shine into this world. So, I guess about four weeks ago, Tyler asked me if I would be willing to speak uh, and encounter with him. Without hesitation, I said, of course, whatever is needed. 
That was four weeks ago. <laughs> so two weeks went by, and I said, well, I might have to call and see when he wants me to speak and what he wants me to speak on. And I can't tell you exactly how that conversation went, but I can tell you exactly what I got out of it. it is uh, stick on what you know. Stick on your walk with Christ. So, at the ripe old age of 41 years old, there's three things I know. The first two be, I'm a miserable sinner. The second, it's through God's grace I'm saved. Now everyone sitting here today is a sinner. There's only one person that's ever walked the face of this earth without sin. Ecclesiastes 7 20. Indeed, there's not a righteous man on earth who continually does good and who never sins. This one I love. This is grace. And so Ephesians 8, for it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God. Now, my papa Brian always said, you know, if you're going to tell a story, it's best to start from the beginning. It's funny how those things that didn't make a lot of sense at the time, looking back on, seem to change your world. So I'll start at the beginning. In 1982, I came into this world. I was all boy. I had no fear. The biggest thing was the biggest child was. See, in the 80s, they didn't diagnose kids with ADHD. Our parents thought they could discipline it out of us. Now, I don't think that ever happened. And Brooke will tell you, being a teacher, that I still can't sit still and probably should have been diagnosed. Uh, so I stayed in trouble. My mind had to see the results of my actions. So I set hay fields on fire with fireworks. I put cats in mailboxes <laughs> to keep uh, Doc Joe in, uh, in business. And I was a great aim with a BB gun. I always hit what I was aiming at. But those were probably not the things I should have been aiming at. And I even managed to set the church on fire. Uh, and I'm not talking on fire for God. <laughs> We're talking literal flames at my aunt and uncle's wedding. Uh, now, Brooke wanted me to assure you that that was an accident. And my aunt and uncle are still married to this day. <laughs> See, I was raised in church. We went every Sunday. I never felt like I could live up to the expectations of God. I never felt that I could meet those standards. Church always made me feel like a failure. So I drifted away. God wasn't the first in my life. I was only concerned with worldly relationships. Mainly popularity. And I was good. I was surrounded by people. People wanted to be around me. But when I was alone, that's when it hurt. That's when I knew something wasn't right. I was depressed. Now, through my teenage years, when I was made to go to church, I felt judged. I felt like a hypocrite. I felt that everyone was better than me. I felt my sins were greater. I could never be forgiven. So that brings me to my mama, Jane. In, in the day I was born, my mama, Jane, loved me. I never did anything earn that respect. And I'll even say 
I don't think I deserved it at times. This is the first law for my life. The first stage. This is what's called prevenient grace. That's a that's a mom on grace. And God loves us. So I go to John 419. We love because he first loved us. So the next stage in my life, I've got more columns for already. I say it's the engagement stage. See, in 2001, a young lady walked into my shop while I was shooting a game of pool with a few friends. And she was different. She demanded respect. So right away, she caught my attention. And I put on my man of challenge. <laughs> and I walked up and asked her out. She simply said no. So anybody that knows me knows that I don't take no for an answer. And I truly do believe there's nothing in this world that I can't So I arranged for us to be in the same place again. And I asked again. My man was going to learn about it. She said no again. So I had to figure out why. I had to understand. So I asked her. No. Simply, I don't take guys like you. Well, what does that mean? Arrogant, loud, obnoxious. So I said, what do I need to have a show? Come to church with me. That's not a problem. I grew up in church. I went as a child. I could even probably wow you with a Bible verse. So I went. That's all I did. But see, we talked about it. 90% of the Bible is just showing up. I started there. I started to change. It wasn't that 180 I turned around and never sinned again and walked straight to God. It wasn't like that. It was an eighth of an inch at a time. And any carpenter will tell you that eighth of an inch over a great distance adds up. So the time came where I had to ask her father and her, her hand in marriage. See, we have to ask God. We have to ask God in our life. We have to be justified. Romans 3.24 And all are justified by His grace through the redemption came by Christ Jesus. This last stage in my life, I struggle. This last stage is part of it. So I'm going to tell you Acts 26 18 to open their eyes and turn from the darkness to the light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of their sins and the place among those who are sanctified by faith in Him. In 2010, Again, in 2013, I became quiet. I was scared to death. Carson, Kennedy, and my mother. But my three girls. 
words made me a better man. I failed as a father. My temper. My wrong advice that Brooke has to play damage control on. <laughs> and I won't always set the best example. But I try to be better. This stage in my life, in my walk, sanctifying grace, I fought it with. My conversations, my discipline. And I wish I was better. I'm a tell. See, when my girls were born, I think every father starts looking for the simple answer. What's the one thing? What's the one thing as a father? Do I need, do I need to teach my children? You don't have to look any further. I can give you the answer. See, our time on earth is temporary. The one thing that we need to teach our children is God. I want to spend eternity in heaven with my children, my wife, my family, my church. In this stage of my life, I see my failures, my struggles, my sins. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to walk away 100% of the time. But I am going to tell you that I'm better today than I was yesterday. But I'm not as good as I'm going to be tomorrow. And that's that part of the grace. The third thing that I've realized in life that I'm sure of, and Dan Buckner will tell you, I don't have any conversation that this doesn't come out. Chris Hyde will tell you. My favorite Bible verse is Proverbs 27 17. Iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Now, I've probably told Dan a few times over the years. We've made that. See, I thought to myself, how do I know what I know? How have I learned the things in my life? I'm an avid hunter, fisherman. You know, my father taught me this. My job came from experience before me. I didn't know everything when I walked through the door. Mechanics, plumbing, I still got uncles I taught. Love. My mom, Jane, my mother, my Aunt Judy. God, I'm still learning. I've got this church to help. Iron sharpens iron. Ray Phil sharpens. David Wilson, Sharpen. Harvey Pepper, Sharpen. Tyler, everyone in this church got a job to sharpen each other. I ask Carson, I ask this youth group, are you watching me? See, the thing is, I question. If I'm sharpening you, but you are actually the one sharpening me. I want to be better for each and every one of you. So before we go today, I ask you to sharpen me. Iron sharpens iron.
64, less of a shot, a stainless steel, 64. <laughs> Thank you. 